very welcome everyone uh, to today's uh, uh, row. It's my great pleasure to introduce uh, today's speaker, Omar Al Hosni. Um, Omar is an assessor from uh, Cornell University, uh, and he got uh, his PhD from uh, Columbia University, working with uh, Venit Goyal. And uh, after the PhD, he joined uh, Cornell uh, as an assistant professor. His research is on the application and also on the algorithmic side of uh, robust optimization. And today he's going to talk about robust facility location problems. So without further ado, uh, Omar, the mic and the screen is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Reza and Yanis for inviting me and uh, uh, for putting this this uh, together. This is a very nice uh, series of um, uh, of talk in this uh, in this webinar. So <clears throat> today I will be talking about um, robust facility location problem. We'll tell a little bit more uh, about that in a second. Um, but before that, uh, so this is a joint work. Uh, with my former PhD advisor, Vinit Goyal from Columbia University, and my current colleague at Cornell, um, David, uh, David Schmoyce. <clears throat> okay, and this is a work that I've started like actually like towards literally like the last month of my of my PhD program, and I've been working on this, this uh, very nice class of problems over the past um, uh, uh, two years. Okay, so... So what I will do today, um, so I have like my two slide page on uh, facility location problem. And then uh, later on, I will tell you more about robust facility location problems. So facility location problem is a very popular uh, and classical combinatorial optimization uh, problem that has been studied uh, extensively, both in the literature of operations research, as well as uh, computer science. What is the setting we have? Um, a set of clients and a set of facilities. They both live in, in the same uh, metric space. And uh, roughly speaking, what we need to do is we need to decide which facilities uh, to open in order to serve the, uh, the client. So we think about the client as, as demand points that um, needs to be served from the open facilities. And the cost that we, we, we pay, so we would like to minimize the cost, which is uh, which has two pieces. The first one is the cost of the facilities and uh, then plus the cost of the, the assignment cost, which is the distance between the clients and the, the facilities from which we are gonna serve the, 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 the client. Uh, so, and there are many, many variants of, of this, this problem. We could think uh, not only about the opening cost of the facility, but as well about the cost of putting some inventory in the facility, the, so the holding cost, and so on and so forth. And um, so and there are so many applications of the problem. The classical one, you think about uh, a retailer who has some, uh, who needs to open some warehouses. Let's say Amazon would like to open some warehouses. So, and then they need to decide in which location they will uh, they would like to have this this these warehouses in order to be close to to uh, to the to the demand uh, uh, demand point. Another uh, application to think about is where to put the inventory. Like you have like a chain of stores, and um, um, you would like to decide where to put the inventory and how much inventory to put in in each store in order to be again close to the demand, so that you minimize this this cost of inventory and the cost of the uh, the assignment cost, the transportation cost. Um, so I will talk a little bit about all variations of this facility location problem, but let me start with the most classical one, uh, which we refer to in the literature as deterministic and capacitated facility location problem. So when I say deterministic here, there is no uncertainty and, um, and uh, the incapacitated facility location problem is the problem where each facility has a fixed cost um, which I will denote here by CI. And once you open the facility, there are no capacities in the sense that the facility can serve any number of um, clients. 
Okay, so this is the most classical facility location problem. So and it can be formulated as the following uh, integer program. So here I will denote CI is the fixed cost of opening facility I. ZI is a binary variable um, which is equal to zero if we don't open the facility and one otherwise. And then the distances I'm denoting him, I'm, I'm denoting them by DIJ. So DIJ is the distance between facility I and client J. And the objective function, so when yij again is a binary variable, that will tell me whether I should serve client j from uh, facility i. This is a very simple um, integer program. So the first piece is you know, the opening cost. So it's a summation over all facilities ci, zi. The second piece is the transportation cost, which is the distance, the sum of the distances between all clients and then the facilities that I will use to serve this, this client. And we have these two classical constraint that the first one is a covering constraint that ensures that each client is satisfied. And then the second one is that you can only satisfy a client uh, if uh, from facility i, if that facility is open. So if zi is equal to, uh, to one, so if zi is equal to zero, all the yij for all j should be equal to zero. So this is the most classical um, facility location problem uh, that uh, I would say like we teach in any um, uh, basic undergraduate course on discrete optimization or like introduction to, 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 to algorithm. And this problem is known to be NP-hard. Uh, it's NP-hard to approximate uh, within uh, the lower bound, the best lower bound that we know these days is this 1.463 due to Guhan and Kohler. Um, uh, and then uh, there is, I'm not going to attempt to review the literature here, but there is huge um, stream of, of research on trying to develop um, approximation algorithms for um, for the uh, deterministic um, and capacity facility location. Uh, more than two or three decades of of of, um, of, of results, starting from a logarithmic um, bound until uh, then. There is this work of Schmoy, Sardos, and Artal getting the four approximation and then improving over. Uh, this constant uh, approximation, we still don't, we still haven't reached that this this lower bound. But the algorithm that we have these days are first very fast, like they're polynomial time algorithm. They're implementable, very efficient, and uh, get you uh, in uh, a worst case theory, uh, worst case theoretical guarantee of of uh, of a constant. I think the best constant right now is one point something, but still uh, uh, higher than this lower bound of one point four six. Okay. So this was my uh, little intro on uh, the classical uh, facility location problem. As I mentioned earlier, there are many uh, uh, variation or models of facility location problem. And if I would like to 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 think about um, uh, how we would classify this 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 problem, one well, the first classification is we could think about the incapacitated problem versus the capacitated problem. So in the incapacitated problem. Um, an open facility can serve any number of clients. There are no capacities on the number of clients that you can um, you can serve as long as you pay the fixed cost uh, per this facility. On the other hand, you have the capacitated problem. And here, again, there are um, a few variations of the problem. Um, but a high level, at a high level, um, the open facility, if we open a facility, it can serve a limited number of clients. Uh, or uh, it can serve any number of clients, but we have to pay a cost per unit for each client or for each unit of demand that we suck in, in, in this facility. So there we qualify the problem as, as, as capacitated. And more specifically in the literature, there is this difference of soft capacities versus hard capacities. So soft capacity is what I mentioned. Like there are no upper bounds on the number of clients that you can serve, but you have to pay a unit cost for each service client. OK, um, this is different from paying a fixed cost. Uh, so for each one you pay uh, for each unit of demand that you stock in this facility, think about it for each unit of inventory that you will put there, uh, you have to pay a unit cost. And then hard capacities uh, there are, I mean, you could have this, 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 um, this uh, cost per unit. But on the top of that, there are, I call them hard upper bounds that cannot be violated. So which means like 
um, uh, each facility has a has a, has a, has has a limit that cannot be uh, on the number of units or the number of clients will be satisfied. That cannot be violated, even if you pay uh, a cost uh, for it. And um, as you can um, expect, the problem in terms from the algorithmic point of sight. Uh, it gets harder when you move from the incapacitated setting to the soft capacitated setting to the hard capacitated um, uh, setting. And then the other classification, um, and that would be more of, uh, uh, of interest to us today, is um, there is a stream of literature on deterministic facility location. And when I say deterministic, is I mean that the demand points or the clients are deterministic, are fixed. They're given to you. Um, you know which clients you need to satisfy. You know where the demand points are uh, uh, located. On the other hand, um, practically demand could be answered in, in, in a wide range of application. Uh, um, we don't know exactly that the demand. The demand is uncertain, and that's what motivated this literature uh, uh, of optimization uh, and their uncertainty. And depending on the data that you have available, depending on the um, uh, how the decision maker uh, think about uh, risk. Uh, and uh, there are different approaches uh, in the relationship. So one of them is um, stochastic optimization. Uh, so here in st the stochastic facility location problem is such that, well, the, the demand points are captured by, by distribution. We have a distribution um, of, the, of, the, of the, the client that we need to, 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 to serve. And then uh, we could, for instance, optimize over um, uh, an expected cost uh, to optimize over average uh, scenario. And I would say this is the, the, the first um, set of problems that have been studied for facility location and uncertainty, starting from early work of Luvo. And then uh, there are a couple of papers of uh, of uh, uh, Shaitan Yaswami and David Schmoyes. Uh, um, so Shaitan Yaswami wrote a whole thesis on this stochastic facility location problem. Uh, I'm only uh, uh, putting two references uh, here, but uh, of course, as you can expect, there are uh, um, uh, so many uh, references on stochastic facility location problem. Then uh, we have robust facility location problem here. Uh, the decision maker would like to have a set of scenarios um, that are uh, modeled by an uncertainty set. And uh, we would like uh, uh, to hedge against the worst case scenario. So we would like um, to, um, to optimize over the worst case scenario of, 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 uh, of, uh, of, uh, of demand. And uh, this is again a problem that uh, was studied in the past, uh, 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 I would say, two decades. Um, uh, there is this paper of Sharikar um, uh, and his co author. Uh, there is another paper of, uh, on, on uh, facility location problems, robust facility location problem with outliers. Um, and so many others, and then I will, when I uh, start talking about our problem, uh, I would mention the difference between um, this this um, this set of papers and and uh, and our uh, problem. And very recently, um, um, there are two three papers on distributionally robust facility location problem. Here, where uncertainty right now um, is captured by an ambiguity set. Um, and uh, the the objective function, so the the second stage. Uh, cost is uh, the expectation uh, um, of the, the transportation cost over the worst case uh, distribution from the ambiguity uh, set. And this is a um, started with this 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 uh, paper of uh, Shaitani Swami and his student Linares and uh, another group of people at Georgia Tech as well um, uh, have looked to this uh, to this problem. Um, so what I will do today, I will talk about uh, robust facility location problem. You would expect that since we are in a, a robust optimization webinar. Uh, and uh, let me uh, jump directly to, um, to our problem. Um, so I will specifically talk about the capacitated robust facility location problem, because this is the problem that turned out to be, to be hard. But toward, when, when I get into the analysis, I will also uh, say uh, a lot of, uh, a few things about the incapacitated uh, uh, one. So let me try to introduce the problem first. So we have, uh, I'm going to denote just for, for illustration, the facilities by this, by this uh, blue uh, uh, squares. So these are the location in which I could, uh, uh, I have the, 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 the potential facilities. And then the clients are this uh, uh, red uh, circles. This is a two stage uh, problem. In the first stage, I need to decide an integral supply for each facility. 
So I need to decide how many units of inventory I need to put in each um, facility. And this is even before observing the, the, the demand of the, um, of the clients, okay? And then uh, I observe the demand scenario. Um, and we can assume that the demand scenario is coming from an uncertainty set. And then in the second stage, um, I will uh, need to satisfy this demand scenario, which means I need to transport the supply from facilities to clients in that demand uh, scenario. And then I pay um, a cost uh, for that. This is the, the second stage cost is a distance cost. The first stage cost is the cost of uh, having uh, um, supply in each facility. And they have to pay a unit cost for each unit of supply. For simplicity, for simplicity, let's assume that each client needs one unit of inventory, okay? So each client needs one unit of inventory. And let's think about uh, uh, a demand scenario is coming from a budget of uncertainty. So which means you have this universe of clients, but there are only K clients that will uh, need to be, to be satisfied and we need to optimize over the worst case uh, uh, scenario. So to illustrate that uh, here, so suppose my first stage decision, my supply decision is given by this, this green uh, square, which means I put two units of inventory in this facility here, uh, three units of inventory uh, here, and then one unit of, of uh, inventory in the bottom. So um, this is like, let's say this is the optimal, uh, this is a first stage, uh, first stage decision. This is what I have to do. So which means I didn't put anything on the others, which means I didn't even open this, those facilities. And then in the second stage, I observed the demand scenario. So let's say demand scenario is, come, is this three clients. So I have to satisfy them. So maybe I'm gonna transport one unit from here to this client, another one here to this client, and then this client will be satisfied from, from this unit. I could get another demand scenario, and then my solution for the second stage is gonna be, again, different. And then uh, right now I'm, I'm using this, this, this unit to, to get this client and so on and so forth. So uh, this is the problem that I, uh, I'm looking at. So now let me introduce the mathematical formulation of this, uh, of this problem. Throughout this talk, I'm gonna denote the, the distances by dij. Uh, F is the set of facilities. C is the set of, of, uh, of, of clients. So for each facility I, there is a cost per unit, Ci, okay? Um, and a scenario, as I mentioned, uh, is given by any K client. So here we used, uh, this is just for illustration, we could also handle other other uh, sets, uh, but I'm gonna use this implicit model of uncertainty. This is a very popular uh, model uh, for um, uh, in robust optimization. So we have a universe of, uh, uh, of clients and, uh, uh, but there are only K of them that would need to be, to, be, to, to be satisfied. So a scenario is given by any K client. And as you can see here, this could have an exponential number of uh, clients. So if the, the universe of client is N, and the center is given by K, so that's uh, um, N choose K is the number of clients, which could be exponential in the dimension of the, the problem. And then as I say, again, for, for um, simplicity, each client in a center needs only one unit of, uh, of, uh, of supply. My objective function is the sum of the first, K, first stage uh, supply cost and a worst case assignment cost over all demand scenario. And this is the mathematical uh, 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 formulation. So let me uh, walk through this, this formulation quickly. Uh, CI is the cost per unit. XI is my decision variable. This is the supply that I have to put in facility I. This is an integral supply, okay? So my first stage cost. And then a second stage cost is a worst case over all scenarios. So I'm denoting CK is the set of all scenarios that are given by this NEK client. S is the scenario. And then my second stage cost is uh, a summation over uh, the, the, from the facilities to the clients in that scenario S, and then this is the distance cost. Um, the constraints again, um, are the first one is such that for every scenario S, uh, for every client in that scenario, we need to, it needs to be satisfied. So why IJS should be greater than one. Then the last one, you can, uh, you should not violate the capacities of the, of the, of the facility. So if you put XI, 
uh, unit in facility I, well, you can uh, use Atmos XI unit from there. So in every scenario, so in every scenario, the number of units um, that you transport out of the facility should be smaller than, than, than XI. Uh, so here I could relax YIJS because since this is integral, the second stage is a matching problem. So uh, by construction is going to be uh, uh, integral. Uh, and uh, I call this problem SCRFL, which refers to soft capacitated robust facility location uh, um, problem. And why it's soft capacity is because you pay a cost per unit, but you don't have upper bonds on, um, on XI. Uh, any questions about the model before I uh, talk a little bit about the contributions? Yeah, maybe I have a small one. Please. Um, so it's kind of a budgeted uncertainty, right? So you're yeah. um, a discrete version. So is, is there a reason that you model it like um, um, over the, the whole set of discrete scenarios, or could you use the classical budgeted formulation with variables for the... Yeah, good question. So uh, the, yeah, you can basically uh, have the, the, the worst case is going to happen at a, at a discrete point. So the worst case of the budget uncertainty is going to be an extreme point of that budget. Uh, and then extreme point is is uh, here, so it's given by by uh, exactly k client. So um, yeah, it doesn't matter if you write it as a discrete set or as a continuous uh, set in this setting. Yeah. Okay. Is there something in the chat? Uh, uh, it's it's about uh, the objective yeah. function. Yes. Yes. Uh, there should be big parentheses, like yeah. So if. This minima, thank you for this remark. This minimization is over the whole thing. Uh, so you minimize this first stage cost and you minimize the worst case uh, cost. Um, thanks for pointing out to this. Um, other questions about the model? Okay, so, uh, so one thing that I would like to emphasize here is that we cannot replenish in the second stage. We cannot open new facilities or we cannot put uh, additional supply in my network. So the only thing that we can do is to uh, uh, shift uh, uh, or transport the, 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 the supply that I have in the first stage uh, to uh, the, uh, the clients that need to be served after I observe the, the scenario. And this is what makes this problem very different than uh, some other problems that has been studied. And this is what makes as well the problem uh, hard, is that once you, you just decide on the supply in the first stage, and then you just need to use that supply to satisfy all your, um, uh, your clients for, for uh, uh, any scenario. Um, and uh, 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 so this problem is challenging for a couple of reasons. So the first one, even if you relax the problem, so even if you relax XI to be to be continuous, and um, um, so if you, you, you relax the, 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 the whole problem, you just think about the LP, the LP has an exponential size. Why? Because the number of scenarios is exponential. As I said, any scenario of size K, so uh, this is known for, for the, the budget of uncertainty or the, the K1 polytops, the number of exponential is N to K, the number of scenarios is, is N to K, that's going to be exponential in the, the, and that's 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 uh, that's, uh, that's uh, the, the challenge actually in, in, in robust optimization with the, under this uh, this uncertainty set. Um, actually, even if you uh, fix the first stage solution, even if I tell you this is the supply, uh, give me what is the, the 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 worst case assignment in the second stage. I mean, I call this as well matching because in the second stage I have just the scenario and I need to match. The, the, the scenario with the unit of inventory. Uh, even finding the worst case uh, scenario is, is, a, um, is a, a challenging problem. Uh, again, because there are exponentially uh, many uh, scenarios. And then the, 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 the other layer, layer of the difficulty comes from the combinatorial structure of the problem is that we, we need to have like a integer supply um, and uh, integral assignment. Uh, um, and that would not be actually, we, we, as you we will see in a little bit, that would not be actually the, 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 the focus we, we were able to, 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 to handle that. 
Um, and this last point is we are not allowed to add capacity in the second stage. And this is what makes the problem different from this literature on two-stage robust coverage. Actually, if you if you are allowed, if the recourse decision um, allows to, 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 to uh, restock or replenish or add the supply, this is more like a, a two-stage robust covering problem. Uh, so because the, the constraints are going to be to be covering constraint, and it has been studied uh, in this um, starting this work of um, Feige, Vahab, um, and this work of GNR, uh, uh, Anupam Gupta, Arabi, and Vish, 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 and as well like me and uh, Vinit Goel has uh, like uh, some papers uh, on this two stage robust covering, but this is not two stage robust covering specifically because we are not adding capacity in the second stage. Uh, so we don't know any theoretical guarantees for, for this problem that I just mentioned. Uh, except for the incapacitated case. Uh, there was a constant approximation in a, in a, in a paper that I will uh, uh, talk about in a few slides. Um, our main contribution is that we give the first theoretical guarantee um, for this uh, uh, first approximation algorithm, I would say, with this logarithmic theoretical guarantee for this problem. The, 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 the bound is exactly this big of log k over log log k. Recall that k is the size of the of the of the scenario. So consequently, you get as well the log n over log log n, where n is the number of clients. Um, and uh, this is a yeah, of course, this is a polynomial time um, algorithm with this with this with this with this guarantee. Uh, but as well, what I would like to convey in this talk is how to show this 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 bound and which policy to use. Uh, and it turns out that the policy is very simple, but the analysis is not that simple. Um, the, the policy, I will call it static assignment uh, 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 policy, um, and uh, um, it's a very efficient policy, it's volumetric time policy, but, but very fast to, to, to compute, and surprisingly, it gets you this, this uh, uh, strong uh, 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 bound. So the rest of my talk would focus mainly on introducing the static assignment policy and telling you more about this, this, um, uh, this, this result, okay? To warm up, let's start with the incapacitated robust facility location problem. This is just as a warm up. So the main difference between the capacitated setting and the incapacitated setting is in the first stage cost. So in the incapacitated setting, I have CI is the cost per facility. This is a fixed cost. So once I open the facility and ZI is just an inter, uh, a binary variable, once I open the facility, I can serve any number of clients from that facility. This is the main difference with the incapacity. So there are no, no capacity. You can serve any number of clients. You only need to pay this, this, uh, this fixed cost. So let's look to the solution. So suppose this is my optimal solution. Okay. So which means I have to open right now. There is no inventory. I mean, uh, or think about it. There is infinite inventory when you open the facility. Uh, so suppose this is my solution. Let's say I get this scenario. Let's look to the assignments of, of, this, of this client. So even when I change the scenario, this is a very simple observation because there are no capacity. Each client would go to the closest facility. Okay, so each client, this client would go always to the closest facility independently of the scenario. As long as the client is part of the scenario, it will go to the first, uh, um, to the closest facility. So I wrote it here, a client is always assigned to the same facility independently of, uh, of a scenario. And this is what motivates this static assignment policy. So what is static assignment policy? It's like this yijs does not depend on s. So the yij recall is the, the, the variable, the binary variable that uh, uh, indicates whether we use facility i to satisfy client j in scenario s. So it's independent of the, of the, of the, of the, of the scenario because whenever j is, is, needs to be satisfied, it's, um, why I, he will go or she will go to the, to the same uh, facility to sign assignments clause does not depend on, on uh, the scenario. In other words, this policy is optimal for the problem, okay? So remember the problem was challenging because there are exponentially many scenarios, but here we were able to get rid of this dependency on S on the variable. So that makes the problem, uh, 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 actually we will show it makes the problem uh, polynomial uh, size. 
So this was for the, the integral problem. Actually, we can also show that the static assignment policy is optimal even for the LP relaxation of the problem. So even for the LP relaxation of the problem, we can we the, this this is this is optimal. So if you assign fractionally each client to uh, a set of um, uh, facilities that are fractionally open, um, this assignment is the same independence of the the scenario. Again, for the reason that there are no 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 capacities. So to get a, finally a polynomial time algorithm for the uncapacitated city, all what we have to do so uh, is to round the solution. We show that the the some slight modification of the of the the rounding technique that has been introduced in um stardos ardal paper uh, also gives you a, a a four approximation for this uh, for this uh, problem here for rounding of this problem the the, the and then the lp relaxation uh, can be solved in, in polynomial time because this is just a polynomial size um uh, lp uh, so uh, overall, you get a four approximation for the incapacitated robust facility location uh, uh, problem, and this is an improvement from the uh, previous known bound um, uh, from this 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 paper in 2013 that gets you a ten um, approximation. Uh, but more importantly, what we, what I'm interested in here is to introduce the static assignments. Uh, 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 policy. This this four approximation comes as a byproduct from the simple observation that the client um, goes always to the same facility. Now let's let me go back to our main problem, uh, the problem, the facility location problem with capacities, um, and let me look to the fractional problem. So. Um, Let's relax this. Uh, the, we have a xi that was like an integer. Let's me relax this 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 xi and look to, to the integral to the fractional problem. Again, fractional problem is also challenging because of the exponentially many uh, many uh, many scenario. I will take care of the rounding later on. So, what I will do here, I will use the static assignment policy again. So, which means y i j. S is equal to Y I J. The assignment of a client does not depend on um, on the uh, the scenario. Uh, well, here everyone could um, uh, cook up a, a, an easy example to show that this policy is not optimal anymore. So, so the policy is restrictive. Um, let me show you a simple example. Suppose this what I have. So now I'm back to the capacitated problem. I have these three units of inventory here, two there in the up and in the bottom one unit. Let me focus on the client that is uh, in the Dutch circle. Okay. So right now this client in this scenario. So the so it's a scenario of three clients. This these are the three clients. I'm not assigning this client to the closest facility. Why? Because you know, I'm taking care of the, the cost of the, the total cost of the matching. And there is like another client, which, uh, uh, which is here. So I would rather use this unit to go there. And uh, this guy uh, gets served from here and uh, this one from there. So um, uh, when I change the scenario, right now, because there is no client on the left of the, the dash circle, um, sorry, on the right of the dash circle, uh, then this client gets assigned from this unit. So in other words, so the assignment of the clients, when you have capacities, depends on the scenario. Because only you have one unit here. This cannot serve any number of, of clients. So depending on the scenario, uh, you might change the, the, the. So uh, implementing this policy, yijs is equal to yij, uh, we know that this is not uh, uh, optimal policy. Uh, but what I will do, I'll still implement this policy. I will still use this yijs is equal to, to, to yij. And surprisingly, I will show you that this is a very strong policy. Uh, but it's strong for the uh, uh, fractional problem. Um, and uh, I'll say more about that in the next slide. But before that, uh, I mentioned that a few times. I said that the static assignment policy is tractable once you get rid of the dependency of the scenario. Uh, you can solve the problem uh, in, in, in polynomial time. 
uh, using a compact LP. Uh, why? Well, this is the this is the this is the LP that you get when you uh, restrict yijs to be yij. Uh, you still have this max this maximum over all scenarios, but you just have this indicator of j in s. The, the variable does not depend again um, uh, here on on s. The same thing for for this constraint. So this is a very classical. Um, a robust optimization constraint uh, that you can uh, separate efficiently over it and write it as a compact LP. Um, uh, this is a standard trick. Uh, when you take this, this maximum over sum of y, i, j, j, and s over all the scenarios, you, uh, you can write it as a, a, a maximum over uh, uh, extreme points of these K1 polytops. And then you go to 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 the to the dual uh, uh, problem, and you uh, drop the mean. So you go first to the epigraph formulation for this um, for this uh, objective function, and for this one, uh, you write it of this this dual form, and you introduce the dual variables into the problem. Uh, bottom line: this is um, this can be uh, this is a standard trick in robust optimization, and the problem here can be written and solved efficiently as a, as a, as a compact uh, uh, LP. Um, but this is just a relaxation. We need to know how good or bad this uh, this this uh, relaxation, and uh, that takes me to the main results. Uh, we show that static assignment policy gives a log k over log log k approximation for the LP relaxation. Uh, we round the fractional solution by losing only a constant factor. Again, here, a slight modification of the filtering and rounding technique from this old paper of Schmoy, Stardos, and Ardal. Uh, uh, we can uh, get a, a constant approximation. We, we lose a constant to, to get an integral solution. So which means that the meat of the proof is on showing this log over log log for the LP relaxation. Uh, so these two results get you a log over log log for the integral uh, uh, problem. Uh, before giving you, I will give you a lot of some I proof ideas uh, on how to, to, to get here on how to show that static assignment policies are, uh, are, are strong. Um, but before that, this is a, usually you would like to stop in the talk on this sentence here. So um, as you can say, the fractional solution is static. Um, but this is just, this is the fractional solution. What I did after having the fractional solution as I, I rounded the solution. And I would like to emphasize that the rounded solution is not static anymore. So the, the, the integral solution is actually um, uh, adaptive. In fact, the, a, a static integral solution could be very bad. Um, so at a high level, what we did, we just used the fractional LP just to get the fractional as a tool. We, this is not what we're going to implement. So we just get, and then once we round it, we get the x, the integral uh, uh, solution, the supply that I have to put in the first stage. And then for the second stage, as you would know in, uh, in robust optimization, you just observe the scenario and then you solve the use of an LP to, to satisfy the, the scenario. This is the same uh, idea when we talk about, let's say, affine policies. And we say, we're going to implement an affine policy uh, all what matters is just the first stage solution. So once you get the first stage solution, you don't have to implement the affine policy in the second stage, you implement the best thing. Uh, um, so here again, it's the same flavor. We, 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 we solve this LP relaxation, we round the solution, we get the, 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 the first stage supply, and then uh, we observe the scenario, we solve the, uh, for, each, uh, for each scenario. That policy gets you a log of a uh, log log. So let me, Say a little bit about uh, talk a little bit about the uh, how much time I have left. Uh, five minutes. Okay. Um, so I know how to implement the static policy. So right now I just need to show the existence of a static fractional solution within log over log log from alpha. Uh, the idea is I will take an optimal solution and I will modify it. I will massage it uh, to make it static. And I will lose some factor uh, when, when I will massage this, this solution. Uh, so the first thing, I will augment the supply by some factor alpha. In fact, if you want to go always to the same um, uh, facility, fractionally to the same facility, 
you might go very far. Uh, um, and that would increase the, 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 the cost if you keep the same supply. Uh, but what we can do, we can increase the supply. And here we take advantage of the fact that the problem is soft capacitated. So we increase the, the supply by some factor alpha, which means we increase the first stage cost by some factor alpha. And, uh, and then we make each client assignment static. Uh, and of course, it's like the, the, the client might go to, 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 to some, not to the closest facilities, but to something that is a bit far. Um, and that's why the assignment cost would also increase. And what we were able to show is that the assignment cost was not going to increase by more than log k of basis alpha. And the last step in the proof would be to balance to find the right factor alpha for which you augment the supply and uh, the assignment cost does not agree by more than log k uh, alpha. And then um, uh, choosing the, the right alpha gets you this log over log log, okay? Um, this is just like the sketch of the, the, the proof, but uh, the, uh, the uh, ideas are, are here. Uh, so the first idea is what I call a growing, what we call actually in the literature, a growing ball uh, technique. Um, so I will fix a client. So this is my, my client. And then what I will do, I will increase, I will grow a ball around this, this client. Um, I will stop when the number of clients in the ball is equal to K. So in this example, I'm choosing K is equal to three. So I'm growing the ball until I reach K. Um, I know by the, uh, by the, the feasibility of the optimal solution that there should be three units of inventory close to this ball. Close means that the sum of the distance between these three clients and these three units should be less than up to. Up to is the uh, worst case second stage uh, uh, cost. So what I will do here, so that I said there are K units close to the ball. What I will do here, I will, each client will get one over K units from, from each uh, uh, um, units from each unit of, of supply, you get only one over K. So in this example, you get one third. And this is a, this is a very crucial, uh, this is a very important uh, uh, idea. In order to make the, 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 the assignment uh, static, uh, we are making the assignment first fractional. So it says that a client would only take one over K from, from, uh, from a unit. Why? Because if there are other clients in the same scenario and they're also taking one over K, it's fine, but if a client is taking a full unit, then if there is another client close to that unit, then th that unit is gone. Uh, um, uh, so here, instead of going always to one facility, you could go to many facilities and take only one over K unit. But the problem that could happen is that in order to find K clients, sorry, K facilities where you will take one over K from them, you might go very far uh, from, uh, from, from that ball. So we need to control the, the size of the, uh, of the ball. So here I didn't even increase the supply. So I'm only paying up one. And the assignment cost, well, is the radius of the ball times K. And what I would like to have ideally is I would like to, to, to stop when the radius of the ball is uh, of the order up to over K so that, that I pay only up to. But this is not possible. You're not, you're not able to find up to for a few, um, few reasons. So that's why we might need to stop the ball to stop growing the ball earlier. And we stop in two cases, and that will give you some intuition about the rest of the proof. When we grow in the ball, each time we try to check the supply that is available in the neighborhood of the ball. Uh, and if there is too little supply, so this is this is an extreme case. So the, you have these two clients, you start growing the ball, but there are no, there is there is no supply around that ball which means this client has to, sh to pay a long distance to get to, to the unit in the optimal solution. So in that case, we show that there are no more than K clients of this type. So there are no more than K clients. That means you, there is only one scenario of, of this type. So we're going to dedicate a full supply to this scenario and pay up to one. This is only increasing my objective by a constant and then an assignment cost of of up to, so I'm only losing a constant for this, for this uh, uh, 
uh, client. The last idea is the opposite. If I have too much supply, I don't have to grow the ball anymore. So more specifically or more formally, I will look to the supply around the ball when I'm growing that ball. And then I see if this uh, supply can serve, let's say half of my clients. If that is the case, I dedicate all this supply to this, the, to this, uh, to this, to this, to this client and stop growing the ball because I have enough supply to serve them statically. Uh, uh, but if it's not the case, then I, I, I keep, I keep growing. Uh, so when did I grow the ball here? I grew the ball if the number of clients, if the supply was not able to satisfy half of the clients. So which means the clients are more than half of the supply. So which means from a step to another one, I'm doubling the clients. Uh, I started with one client. I know that I could stop at K and then I'm good. Uh, and each time I'm doubling the client. So how many steps I have to get into K in log K step. And this log K step is, is the largest radius of the ball that I uh, have to achieve in order to get this, this, this log uh, uh, K. And so this, 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 this last piece I show only log K, but uh, doing some, some, some tricks, we can, we can uh, uh, make it log K over uh, uh, log, K, log K. This is just like for, for illustration. So hopefully I was able to, you know, convey some of the ideas beyond this, uh, behind this, this, uh, this, uh, 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 this proof. Um, so I'm going to, 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 to conclude. Um, uh, so as we've seen, the, the, the static assignment policy um, is optimal for the LP relaxation of the incapacitated robust facility location. Um, and we can do the rounding and get the four approximation for this uh, uh, problem. Uh, static assignment policy gives you a log over log log approximation for the LP relaxation. Again, we can do the rounding and get log over log log for the soft capacitated. And this is a very strong uh, uh, numerical policy. Like, and uh, um, the way how I, I, I get actually into that problem initially, I was solving some some uh, two-stage uh, robust facility, uh, two-stage facility location um, uh, a problem, and uh, trying to find a bad instance for this 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 policy. And I was not able to find like a very bad instance. Uh, initially, I thought that the the gap could be as large as square root k or k, uh, and then uh, then I had to uh, uh, we had to 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 show that. Uh, uh, theoretically, and we were able to come up with this uh, uh, logarithmic bound. Um, recently, we were able to show that uh, we can get a constant approximation for a, for some specific metrics, like a line or a plane, uh, even a constant doubling dimension space. We can get a constant approximation for uh, for this this uh, this problem. So the, the 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 first version of this paper appeared in IPCO 2021. The full version. Uh, is under submission is, is available uh, on um, on uh, archive and there are few open problems here so we still don't know if there exists a constant approximation for the problem um, for general metric space uh, I believe that the, um, the log of a log log k is not tight um, and we might uh, get a constant uh, approximation for general metric space we got it in some special metrics but it's still an open uh, question I don't know how to show it uh, um, or maybe we, we can improve the hardness lower bound. So far, the, the hardness lower bound is coming from, from the deterministic uh, uh, setting. And finally, um, so the static assignment policy are not specific only to, to, to this facility location problem. I mean, you can, uh, you can implement them for any, I would say, two-stage robust, uh, uh, two-stage or um, multi-stage robust optimization problem. We just get rid of the dependency on the, on the, on, 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 on the scenario. Well, they might be bad in, in, in some setting for sure, uh, uh, but surprisingly, they, they are uh, good, uh, very good for some uh, other settings. So the question here is like, who, uh, can we use them for other robust uh, optimization uh, problems? Um, that's end my uh, talk. Sorry if I was uh, uh, beyond the time, but thank you so much. And I'm happy to answer any questions.